Hey, good afternoon, y'all. This is Carolina Weather Authority meteorologist Joshua Nagelberg, and Mike and I have been watching the tropics very closely, as you guys can imagine, by our last several videos and posts on our website. Um, and if you've been enjoying them, or if you don't agree with them, which we know many of you probably don't, then um, either way, we'd like for you to see what we have out there, and you can, of course, ask us questions, voice your opinions. I do ask that you kind of keep it professional here, and we will do the same. Um, but please subscribe to our YouTube channel if you already haven't. Um, and um, if you could also uh, go to our CarolinaWXAuthority.com site and read our latest articles. Um, yes, these have gotten some attention, good and bad, from a lot of folks. I'm going to address that in a little bit because I think we need to. But our latest article does speak about the potential that a major hurricane could form here in the next week and potentially threaten the southeast and Gulf states. I say potential, and I'm not throwing that out there lightly. This is not, hey, look at us. We, we want to get your clickbait. We need you guys to see this and support us. Uh, but there's a lot of science that actually goes behind what we put into this article. And I realize this window right here is very large. The reason for that is that we've got two potential systems. We've got a large area of high pressure and steering currents that uh, could change quite a bit here in the next seven days and make a big adjustment from a storm entering the Gulf or a storm going up the East Coast or maybe even coming across Florida from the Gulf to the Atlantic. And we've seen all three of these solutions. And I'm going to talk to you guys more about that. Um, I do feel the need to, and I kind of, you know, I kind of struggle to address this, but I want to address this. There have been some professionals in our field who do not agree with us posting articles like this, if you can imagine that. In fact, I am going to say, you know, I address this with some of my friends. Um, not every meteorologist agrees on how they need to present information. Um, number one, some choose to withhold what could be huge weather threats until they're a lot more certain and then are about to happen. And that's, of course, the cautious approach that a lot of professionals out there want to take because they don't want to get it wrong, and I get that. Um, there's a second group of people who just want to sound the alarm every time and any time because they just maybe never got attention from their mommy and daddy. And, uh, yes, we're well aware of them as well. And then the third group, who I believe we are, is that we're kind of in the middle where we really don't feel like we need to hold back and pull any punches when there is a threat of something major that could occur. I really don't see what the point is in having our... Um, our scientific um, expertise being suppressed by public opinion, if that makes sense. And I'm going to show you guys exactly what, what I'm talking about, but I'm not going to name names. You can probably figure it out later on by searching Twitter. That's fine. Uh, but unfortunately, there's people in that first group of people who just cannot be professional in how they're going to deal with others. You know, it is one thing to disapprove, um, but it's just another thing to do what I'm going to show you next, and that's to copy somebody's work, to put it out on social media, because you have, um, you know, maybe meteorological expertise, but in an effort to bash and criticize people publicly. I don't see what good that does, and that's not how we want to portray ourselves either at Carolina Weather Authority. We're not here to go out and bash people we disagree with, and believe me, there are people we disagree with. Um, I guess we're going to see who's right about this, of course, but I would rather everybody on here know and be prepared for what might happen before it happens, uh, rather than you know, suppressing our, our thoughts and waiting until it's very obvious and maybe it's too late at that point. Um, notice I didn't address anybody in this who's, you know, wannabe meteorologist who, who follows the weather, has their own weather page, doesn't quite know what they're doing. And I'm not even going to mention people who just don't have the credentials, who maybe are concerned and want to inject their opinion into everything. So look, I'm not, you know, yeah, I'm, I'm being defensive here. Um, and this article certainly stands out, um, this graphic that Mike made uh, the other day. Um, but believe it or not, we have been watching this very closely and looking for the potential for hurricanes to form. When are they going to happen? When might they uh, occur? Or are they not going to happen? And we feel like in the next week, there's definitely strong potential with the right track. So we would rather you guys at least take a look at this and follow us more closely. And then if we have to back off on our forecasts, let's do it. You know, I, I'm not right all the time. Nobody is. We're not God. We can't, certainly can't do that. But anyway, I do want to share this uh, tweet. And I'm not going to say who put it up. It is a meteorologist, by the way. Um, but, you know, basically, um, the comments coming from other meteorologists and then non-meteorologists are people who clearly don't want us to express our opinion on what we think could happen. And uh, our goal is, of course, not to misinform anybody. We just want to have you properly informed. So that was out there this morning. Thanks, by the way, whoever you are, for getting us out there and exposing us to everyone. Maybe we'll get more business from it. I don't know. Maybe not. Maybe people will tear us up. I, I, I could care less because I still have a job to do. Um, and then there was one person. There's also quite a, quite a few language tweets in here and, and of course, the political ads. 
uh, delete your website. Yeah, yeah, real professional, buddy. Sure. Um, but then there's one uh, person who actually makes a little sense and says the other side of the coin is that the general population is too ignorant to keep track of the tropics. Bashing them over the head is the only way to wake them up. And you know what? I actually agree with this. I feel like we need to share what's out there so that people are at least aware. Notice we're not saying anybody in here has got to take action yet. You know, there, there'll be a time where maybe it's here or here where they do need to, but we're not to that point yet. So anyway, um, off on my soapbox there. Here's the three systems we're watching. This is 97L. It's got an 80% chance of developing into a depression or storm by um, the end of the weekend. This next system is the one of more concern potentially. Uh, 98L is the invest, a 90% chance of developing, and a new wave will emerge soon off the African coast that has a 20% chance of developing. And we'll keep an eye on that, but I'm not going to talk about it today because we've got too much out ahead of it. Here's the um, satellite imagery. We see a strong trough cutting through the Gulf of Mexico and across the eastern U.S. A lot of moisture coming up from Florida into the eastern Carolinas. Uh, the remains of Josephine still out there, but nothing with a closed circulation. Here's an upper low. Here's a strong cyclone up here. Um, we have a Category 3 and weakening now, Hurricane Genevieve, and uh, more intertropical convergence zone activity on the Pacific side. Been very busy in the Pacific over the last week, but that phase is shifting east into the Atlantic and why we're talking about three systems now. This is as busy as it's been so far. It could only get a little bit busier, in my opinion. Um, 97L, we think here, still got a ways to go before it develops. 98L looks a little bit better, although it's cycling up and down, fighting a lot of dry air and a little bit of wind shear in here as well. That's going to keep it from becoming a major hurricane hitting Puerto Rico, but it could be a tropical storm by the time it gets to that area. Um, and then our next disturbance coming off the Atlantic, uh, off the African coast. I'm going to take a look first here at uh, what we think is the biggest threat, even though it's a little farther off, but it's moving quickly. This is 98L. We think this will be Laura, by the way, by, by the end of the week or early weekend. Um, and you can see it's got still a couple of circulations embedded in it, so no true one circulation, multiple vortices. And what that's going to do basically is keep the system from organizing quickly because when it has competing areas of spin in the atmosphere, um, it's tougher to get them all to organize into one piece. You can also see there's a lot of exposure on the eastern side. Some dry air is being entrained into the center of this storm, so it's going to have a tough time um, intensifying quickly, but it will intensify, we feel, in the right environment in a few days. It just may take a little while. And if you remember Isaias, that was certainly the case, um, although we're now dealing with warmer water and I think eventually less wind shear than Isaias had. Um, so this is definitely one to watch, definitely got some size to it, but still probably a couple days off from developing at this point anyway. Um, and I wanted to go back real quick and show you guys um, the Caribbean if I can real quick. Um, this is tropicaltidbits.com. I uh, really like Levi and the work he's done and I watch his videos and I, I can't even compare myself to him, but um, definitely an expert when it comes to the tropics. All right, we're going to move past that. Anyway, I'm here to show you guys um, 97L, which will eventually, we think, be Marco. And it may not develop till it gets into here. Um, still got some dry air, wind shear to deal with. Um, but um, pretty good agreement in the models up to a point to where it gets close to Honduras on Friday. And then looks like a right bend in response to that trough I showed you guys. So it will try to make a right turn. The big question is, does it spend more time over Honduras or does it get itself into a more favorable environment to develop? And then when it gets into the Gulf of Mexico, is it going to make a turn or is it going to stay weak and low and head toward maybe Texas? Um, the models do not agree, so it's still way too early to make any kind of a call. Um, we've got wind shear that will await it in the Gulf. We've got maybe potential land in here. Um, eventually, what we could have is an environment of weak steering, and this could slow down quite a bit. We may have several days to watch it once it's in the Gulf. That's never a good thing, but just some things I've seen on the models lately. Um, and the GEFS, the ensembles, are definitely not picking up on it right now. Model intensity does agree it's a tropical storm probably at the end of the week or over the weekend. A few models make it a hurricane, others keep it weak. Um, we think it could be a hurricane, yes, but right now I'm not calling that officially. It's still too soon to say. So um, heads up if you're in the western and maybe even eastern Gulf of Mexico. Yeah, I know that's very uncertain, um, but you'll see why in a minute. Um, now, the next system, the one that has more of our eyes and the one we put the graphic out for, um, shows a pretty good agreement in the track. Now, there's some caveats to that. We've got land here, Cuba, Hispaniola, Puerto Rico, and if a system tracks over these islands, it is not going to develop into a major hurricane over those islands. Uh, if it comes south, maybe it could south of Cuba, but really the best path for it to do that would be tracking to the north of the islands, near just to the south of the Bahamas, and then that could threaten Florida as a major hurricane. 
Am I saying that's going to happen yet? No, it's just something we have to watch. Um, some of these models take it farther across the Gulf, and we've seen uh, some ensemble solutions come up the east coast of Florida. There was more showing that yesterday. They've shifted west. Don't be surprised, though, if they shift back to the east, because remember, we're looking at two or three vortices here, trying to figure out which one's going to take over and taking that and running with it. So there's a lot out here that can change, but we've seen a lot of models show um, a hurricane potential in this area and up into here. And that's why we put that out there, because we think it's possible. Um, and, and here's what I'm showing you. This is the GEFS, so the ensemble showing anywhere from Louisiana to staying near and to the east of Florida and then recurving out to sea. Uh, those of us in the Carolinas, we definitely still have to watch this. Even if it comes in this way, that moisture eventually gets pushed eastward. and We could have potentially a lot of rain. Uh, it's possible, though, this system comes in a lot weaker if it, if it messes with Cuba and Hispaniola, so that's a possibility. It's possible still if it comes northward, it's in a great spot to rapidly intensify. So all of those are out on the map. It's way too soon to make a call, but this could be a week out, so time to at least be aware. And finally, you can see definitely this um, run of models shows um, almost half of them do make it a hurricane. There have been a few that actually made it a major hurricane in previous runs with that track farther north. We'll see if they go back to that or not. We still think it's possible, and here's why. Surface temperatures remain well above average, especially around the Caribbean islands into the central Gulf of Mexico and the eastern Gulf. Um, so there's a lot of potential fuel. Now, that's just one ingredient. We've got many others we have to watch. Um, and wind shear is another one. Um, by the way, I should have shown this to you a little bit earlier. Um, still a lot of uncertainty, but several solutions showing a hurricane in the eastern or central Gulf and a few keeping it off the Carolina coast. And the time frame for this, by the way, is next Wednesday, about a week from when you're watching this video. So still a lot of uncertainty. So you can see why we had this area on the alert, because guess what? Any of these tracks could send it in that direction. That's not hype. That's called keeping our options open at this point. GFS model is struggling with the center of the storm. Um, you can see they bring it in. There's wind shear. There's other environmental factors. But I think... Um, GFS has not done very well this hurricane season, but we'll see. It could be on to something here. Takes it across Hispaniola and Cuba and just has a much weaker system that may try to get back going in the Gulf. Now, the Canadian model has been upgraded. We used to laugh at the Canadian back when I worked with um, a large company uh, in the weather industry, and now it's showing uh, more consistency in that we've got two systems, and, and this may be more of a worst-case scenario, but I don't think I've ever seen two potential hurricanes sharing the Gulf of Mexico. That could happen. It's not likely, but it could. And I really hope that South Texas doesn't get another one. That's a possibility uh, with what we think will be Marco. Laura, though, it's showing coming um, very close to Cuba and then getting going um, over the central Gulf of Mexico. Uh, so definitely something to keep an eye on there. Um, of course, this is just one model. Um, an earlier run showed it in a different spot. Actually, it was uh, kind of frightening from what I saw. Yeah, heading towards New Orleans. And the run before that showed... Uh, let me go back a little bit here. And again, this is all just speculation at this point. We're not making any calls. Showed it near Houston. So they've all shown something in the central Gulf, but differed um, with each run as to how it's going. Now, the ICON model um, is uh, one that um, we definitely keep an eye on as well, kind of close to where the, the uh, Canadian model is showing. And these, these are potential tracks of where the storms will end up. You can see kind of what we're thinking. This system, it's got slowing down. So Marco could slow down, and that could be a problem here as uh, the steering in this area becomes a lot weaker by next Tuesday, um, whereas up in here, um, we've got a trough that's lifting out. So we've got a little bit weaker steering environment. We've got to see where this high ends up, but we could have two systems to keep an eye on. Here's the ocean heat content, very high in the Northwest Caribbean, not so much down in here. Not that high out in here yet, but between the Bahamas and Florida, there's definitely a window for it if it gets in there to strengthen. Um, and finally, this is another thing I didn't even show you guys. Um, this is from, uh, I think, the university, uh, wxmaps.org, showing if conditions are perfect, which we're not saying they will be, how potentially strong this system could get. Um, and as it moves into 30 degrees Celsius water, there's a potential here for Category 5 anywhere in this region, um, Category 3 or 4 in here. So we're saying there's potential because we see it. Uh, we're not saying it's going to happen just yet. And uh, another thing that works in our favor is um, some very, uh, very um, negative anomalies in the vertical potential, a velocity potential, uh, 200 millibars. This is uh, very favorable for lots of systems to develop and lots of rising air and divergence aloft. So again, um, a lot out there that could certainly favor uh, storms, you know, as we're nearing the peak here in the next couple of weeks, storms to quickly um, intensify. We've seen it happen a lot in the past with Dorian last year, with Irma. 
Um, a lot of them were not forecast to, to intensify that quickly, but they did. We think that um, with the right track, um, we could see this happen again, but we would not be surprised if, for whatever reason, wind shear or land interaction caused these forecasts to bust. So we're not saying that's going to happen yet, but it's definitely on the map. Wind shear right now looks pretty favorable in here, but does get a little more negative over the weekend over the Caribbean. And then we've got more favorable wind shear likely to move in. And I'll show you guys that from WSI. Um, this first system is going to have to struggle with wind shear over the central Gulf. The second system, though, has more favorable wind shear. And again, uh, we'll keep you guys posted. But thanks for visiting us here on uh, Carolina Weather Authority's official YouTube channel. And subscribe if you haven't already. Be safe and uh, look out for the latest updates. We will, of course... Uh, make some changes to our forecasts as we have more certainty. Take care, everyone. God bless.